I'm Alana Kundell, curator for the Disconnection exhibition, which took place at Studio Channel Islands Art Center in Camarillo, California, from April 1st to May 27th, 2023. The exhibition presented a quilt of human stories through the work of eight contemporary women artists, exploring topics of forced displacement and the basic human need for connection and home. I curated this exhibit in response to the many recent destabilizing events involving displacement, including the war in Ukraine. I'm the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor and these events touched on old wounds. Art has always been a place to seek understanding and connection, so I turned to fellow artists to see what they had to say. It's been fascinating to see how these artists have developed new visual languages through different materials to speak meaningfully to human experience. As the space in the title suggests, I'm interested in how we fluctuate in between connection and disconnection in life. The exhibition was created in an open-ended conversation amongst the works. Installed on staggered walls, it offered different conversations between them depending on the position of the viewer in the space. Themes of nature, transformation, erasure, and vulnerability weave through the exhibit. Some of the works excavate human histories shaped in specific geographic locations seeming to layer past, present, and future. For this exhibition, Janet Newalder created several poignant memorial-like installations inspired by her rich family history. As a child, her mother and family were displaced from San Francisco to the World War II Japanese American internment camp in Topaz, Utah. Shikata Ganai, It Cannot Be Helped, was inspired by the shells found by the residents in the harsh desert at Topaz, which was an ancient seabed. Collected by the internees, the shells were turned into handicrafts known as the art of gaman, which means persevere. Janet's elegantly dispersed, cascading installation includes nearly 3,500 hand-pinched porcelain shells. Each shell represents a resident of the camp. Sigrid Orlet, a second generation refugee from Germany, engages with dead roots and trees as, quote, messengers that invite us to listen, end quote. Informed by her upbringing in the aftermath of the Holocaust and her deeply spiritual and scientific forms of wisdom, Sigrid's poetic images of dead tree roots, casualties of climate change, put into context human history within the natural world's expansive arc of time. In Alicia Pillar's works, images of historical events and maps, native plants, geodes, balloons, and recycled materials are wrapped in vinyl and formed into new visceral organisms that exude energy. They speak of human stories shaped by the traumas of racism and colonialism in our times of shifting weather patterns, and they offer perspectives across time and space. As with other works in the show, Alicia's sculptures reveal how different forms of knowledge and emotion can be imbued in material and in abstraction. Nareed Avasar's densely layered and distressed surfaces composed of torn paper, window screen, plastic, rust, and luminous paint 
emulate the fracturing and fragmentation caused by power play throughout history. Israeli born and raised by Holocaust refugees, Nurit's pieces almost seem to have a war-torn quality. Her paintings in this show grapple with climate change, offering a warning through beautiful, abstracted and distressed visual language. Born in Iran, Fatima Burns calls her radiant, abstract and surreal, large-scale oil paintings, visual poems. With inherent references to nature, the artist looks at, quote, modern events and tragedies, both ecological and social, and how those events manifest in contemporary life, end quote. Her fantastical, layered, and poetic paintings are captivating, complex, and open to interpretation. They seem to come from the depths of human experience, conjuring emotion and transforming our ideas of what is possible and what is happening. Maria Adela Diaz is an artist who references her personal experiences of displacement and violence, situated within the history of her homeland, Guatemala, to reflect on socio-political, gender, and climate change issues. Both of her documented performances in the exhibition, Foreign Bodies and Invisible Territory, are powerful moving actions and images that call into question how society devalues certain bodies and experiences. Her pieces express a deep vulnerability that is at the heart of losing one's home and sense of agency and safety. Mart Aponte's intricately punctured paperworks, created through a traditional method called picote, invert the notion of shields and protection through their porousness and their light. They embody vulnerability while casting our senses to the cosmos. The artist says, quote, both light and darkness are part of an existential dialectic that is in constant conversation. They complement each other, end quote. Arezu Barthania, born in Iran, says that her work, quote, reflects the experience of creating a home while existing in a state of in-between, end quote. In this exhibition, her mixed media, layered work references the disconnect between her memories and relationship to her home in Tehran and the complexities of forming an identity in her adoptive home of Los Angeles. Translucent and hanging like a curtain, the work both reveals and obscures as it combines interior and exterior imagery. It speaks to repression, to power relationships, and to the struggle of finding a home in flux. The artwork in the Disconnection exhibition reveals the strength and power inherent in fragility and vulnerability. Thank you for the opportunity to share this incredible work with you. An exhibition catalog with an essay by Peter Frank was published with generous support by Studio Channel Islands Art Center and is available on their website at studiochannelislands.org slash disconnection. I wish to thank and acknowledge the executive director, Peter Tayas, gallery assistant Jamie Dilbeck, the installation team, and the arts community of Studio Channel Islands who all helped to support and put on the show. 
Our appreciation goes out to Betty Ann Brown for her insightful review, Jennifer Gonzalez, Linda Vallejo, Peter Frank, Shana Nice Dambrot, Jill Moniz, Marisa Caicholo, LA Art Documents, and my family for their invaluable support. And I particularly want to thank the artists for their beautiful and meaningful work.